Lockdown Keeper is here. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a talk about Lockdown Keeper because it's essentially here. We've had jo Job Keeper. I've been joking about Mortgage Keeper and now, well, $400 payments announced for Victorians. It looks like Lockdown Keeper is here. What do you reckon, everyone? You know, it'll all, it'll all be good. Now, there have been lots of calls for payments and the media is just going crazy about, you know, this support. Some politicians are, are outraged, are outraged that people won't get this handout from the government if they've got some cash save up, saved up. If you've got $10,000, you're not eligible for it or more than $10,000. Isn't this what an emergency fund is for? This is one week, two weeks. Maybe the Victorian government should ease the burden that they place on their citizens before we're calling for this. I'm not even surprised. What I'm worried about now is the precedent's been set. There'll be calls for this again and again and again. Eventually, it'll morph into some perverse version of UBI. This doesn't come for free people. There's a cost associated with it. Have people forgotten? I mean, the government's come to the rescue now. JobKeeper. Hundreds of thousands of people. A lot of businesses didn't need it. A lot of them did. A lot of businesses paid it, incurred a lot of other costs, and are probably going to go under. You've got the percentage of employed on it. Nearly 9% in Victoria. 7.95 in Queensland. 6.84 in... It was no 7.95 in New South Wales. 6.84 in Queensland. I mean, you know, we really should just give this part to Queensland of the state. That'd be good. You know, just, just give us that part. What do you reckon? So the precedent's been set, guys. I'm, I'm not at all surprised. But I'm worried that people will just start to expect this. That there's now... What difference is there between the two major parties? The Liberals can't be critical at all of Labour just fragrant, you know, blatantly spending money left, right and centre. $500 payments announced for Victorians. Victorian workers affected by the SNAP COVID lockdown will be eligible for $500 payments following heavy lobbying from the state government. So, once again, the federal government is coming in and bailing out the Victorian government. Now, shouldn't, shouldn't we change the, if, if the federal government's paying for it, if they hold the money, shouldn't they have control? Shouldn't we divest that authority from the state level and, uh, for lockdowns and give that to the federal government? Treasurer Josh Frydenberg and Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced the scheme on Thursday afternoon, describing the support as a temporary COVID disaster payment. Under the proposal, the federal government will provide support for areas defined as regional hotspots by the chief medical officer. The payments would be paid jointly by the state and federal government, with national cabinet due to decide the exact split of the, pay of the support. $500 payments to flow seven days after the region declared a hotspot. The $500 payments will be available for those who would normally work at least 20 hours a week. Those who normally work less than 20 hours a week will be eligible for $325 payments. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to get the payment, take it, invest it, save it, use it to survive. Do it. Do what you need to do. But we need to take a step back from the emotional aspect of this and look at the precedent that's being set here continually, again and again and again. Our government has a huge amount of debt, everyone. And it's just growing at a state and federal level. And future generations, all government debt is, is work for future generations. It's work that we have to, by force, contribute to the state. We don't have a choice. People who argue taxes aren't theft... You're forced to work for the state. It's probably people who've never actually had to pay it themselves. It's a little different. It's a little different when someone else just doesn't even give you the money. And all you see at your taxes is a line on the wage. And you get money back at the end of the year because you pay too much. You kind of think it's like a you know saving for Christmas skiing or a cake raffle or winning a meat tray. It's a prize. The government gives you back money. Isn't that nice of them? Where it all changes if you have to pay your own tax, if you have to go into your bank account, fill out all the forms in ATO, and send the money away. Send it away. Go, bye-bye money. Bye-bye money that I earned. Oh, you know, 
that money that I earned in my own business, doing my own initiative, taking all my own risks, investing, learning, educating. Government didn't do a thing, but you know, I have to give it to them. Maybe we need to get rid of pay as you go and just make it uh, voluntary payments. Get people all paid all their money. They won't hold on to it. They'll spend it and then they'll get in trouble. And we'll have ABC articles left, right and center saying, poor Jill spent all her tax money and now she needs to, she wants pay as you go again. Anyway, back to this. I'm going off topic again. The person will not be required to use annual leave, but must have insufficient other appropriate leave entitlements, including special pandemic sick leave, and have exhausted those entitlements, Morrison said. If you don't have to get into your annual leave, so you don't have to get your annual leave, but if your employer is already providing you, what, lease or leave for these types of purposes, then it is reasonable that people would use those in these circumstances. Payments will be made available seven days after the hotspot enters lockdown. The Federal Department of Health defines a hotspot as a metropolitan area, where the rolling three-day average is 10 locally acquired cases a day or any other area where there is the potential for wide community exposure to a highly transmiss transmissible variation. A hotspot can also be declared for a rural or regional area with a rolling three-day average of locally acquired cases per day. So who is ineligible for the payment? People who receive job seeker or other income support will not be eligible for the payment. Well, you're already on Job Seeker. Why would they even get the payment? The Job Seeker unemployment payment is currently set at 310 a week for a single person with no children. Those with more than $10,000 in savings will also not be eligible for the payment. Yeah, so if you have an emergency fund, if you have an emergency fund, you don't need this payment. And some people are outraged about that. that that's life, guys. That's the point of having it. The, I why are we we're looking at all these articles again and again and again and never a discussion about an emergency fund never a probably because it'd be positive news you know such and such lost his job and then had an emergency fund set aside or saved while they could work we're talking about somebody getting through the next week who would normally be in an economic situation where every dollar counts so it's people living week to week that's what it is the, the people who are verge who are on the verge of being destitute probably more than you realize in Victoria at the moment. While those that have independent means of supporting themselves for a week, then I think they would agree that reaching out for Commonwealth taxpayer funded assistance is not something they would consider reasonable for such a short period of time. So how to access the payments. Victorians will be able to apply for the support from Tuesday through Services Australia, Morrison said, with the money directed to affected workers bank account. Those who access the payment must also be prepared for retrospective compliance activity, he said. Frydenberg said the lockdown is a painful reminder that the pandemic has not ended. The government has not yet costed the scheme, but Frydenberg said it would cost around $50 million per 100,000 casuals per week. The estimate is there are around half a million casuals in the metropolitan Melbourne area, and obviously bearing in mind that this relates to the Commonwealth definition of a hotspot, so Treasury and Finance are working the numbers through. But as the Prime Minister has indicated, it is a demand-driven program, he added. So calls for aid amid the Victorian outbreak. It comes as Victoria records three locally new acquired COVID-19 cases on Thursday, all close contacts of existing infections. Was this before or after false, false ones have been identified? This whole thing is a mess, isn't it? Are people getting used to the government just handing out money? That's a scary thing. The state entered lockdown on Thursday, the 27th of May, with residents allowed to exit their homes for exercise, essential work, to provide care, go to the supermarket, or receive a COVID-19 vaccine. While regional Victoria has been given the green light to remove most lockdown restrictions, Greater Melbourne will remain in lockdown until the 10th of June, prompting concerns from the state government, unions, and welfare groups. Well then they should be critical of the state government for doing that, for implementing that. Acting Victorian Premier James Merlino this week requested that the government extend the JobKeeper subsidies to those affected by the state lockdowns. The ball is in the federal government's court. See, this is the thing. If they keep pushing for federal government to bail them out, they're never going to vote. They're never going to be voted out. They're never going to be voted out. If you keep 
keep, you know, handing out the money. How do you get the money? Pushing on the federal government. Well, why don't they have that in place at a state level before they implement these lockdowns? The Australian Council of Trade Unions has also called on the government to reinstate JobKeeper where it is still needed. Well, is the council giving... I hope they're giving members free dues or refunding dues for a year. They really should. While the vaccine rollout continues to flounder, is it... No, it's not. If you look at the stat, you know what? We'll bring this up. Continues to flounder. That's a political-based statement right there. We'll look at the John Hopkins map. I'll bring that up right here. Okay, and we'll look at... We'll look at Australia, guys. Because this is, this is... This is rubbish, you know? Australia. There we go. So there's our, our confirmed cases. 30,000. Okay, sadly, we've had over 900 deaths. But you've got doses administered, administered 4.5 million. 540,000 people have been vaccinated. Is that, is that floundering for 30,000 cases? You know, let's see the past month. The, okay, there you go. Past month. That's it. 287 cases. 287 cases, guys. Let's look at the past day. 13. The whole country. Mind you. So, well, yeah, okay. The Australian Council of Social Services also called for the federal government to increase the one-off disaster recovery payment from 1000 to 3000 per adult. 3000 per adult. We know that many people already have massive accumulated debts. Housing and rent prices are going up, and charities are unable to cope with dramatic increases in demand. A cost senior advisor, Social Security, Charmaine Crow said. So, I mean, here's the thing, guys. Nothing is without a cost. No intervention is without consequences. And I'm concerned that we now, an expectation has now been set that the federal government will always come to the rescue. And our growing debt of $1.3 trillion, give or take a couple of, couple of billion by 24, uh, by 23, 24, combining state and federal, will continue to grow. And what can they do with that? Well, they can tax it right back out, to, uh, or they can inflate it away. Yeah, housing's going to remain affordable, affordable, isn't it? Australia's definitely the lucky country. We're gonna, they're going to be paying this off until 2080. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts and your opinions on this one. Should the federal government be coming in and providing lockdown keeper? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us by signing up for Self Wealth or Stake using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.